Which purple markers or colored pencils would you choose to color purple crocus flowers? Many colorers hear the word purple and immediately pull out their favorite blending combination. The one that you would use for everything from purple grapes to purple unicorns. Maybe VO5, VO4, VO1. Some of you would flip through the notebook where you've saved purple blending combinations from the internet. How about VO9, VO6, VO4? A lot of people would play it safe. You'd look up how to color a crocus marker and use one of the recipes that you find there. Perhaps V17, V15, V12. What all three methods have in common is that you're doing the same thing as everyone else. Today, let's do a little purple magic. Blending combinations are a wonderful way to learn how to use Copic and other alcohol markers. Someone hands you an easy blending group of markers and you practice blending until they're smooth. But if you're more than a few months into coloring and you're still relying on someone else's blending combinations, you're missing the best part of coloring. Standardized blending combinations are a simplified version of coloring. You wonder why your coloring looks flat or cartoonish? It's because blending combinations are for blending, not for realism. In the real world, color doesn't behave nicely like two, four, six combinations. Light, medium, and dark is a dilution scale invented by a marker company. Real colors, they change temperature. Real colors shift from one color family to the next. Real colors can go muddy in the shade. You can't use cartoon colors and expect them to look real. Real color isn't as hard as you think. Today, I'm starting with this photo reference of crocus flowers. You can download the same photograph for free from Pixabay. The link is down in the description. What I immediately notice about these crocus is that they're not all purple. There's some purple here and here, but the color shifts cooler towards violet here. And then there's this weird reddish wine color down there. You won't find this blending combination on anyone's list of favorite recipes. So let's figure it out ourselves, okay? It'll be fun. Okay, so this is what I see as the four landmark colors, and I've sampled them from the photograph. Now, I don't normally do this on a computer. I do it just by looking at it. But you can't see into my head to see what I see. So I've sampled the colors digitally to show you what I'm thinking. When you get good at this, you'll be able to do it in your head too. And remember, there are no right or wrong answers here. I'm just showing you what I see, but you may see it differently and you may use different colors. That's good. We'd both end up with pretty purple crocus flowers, and we'd both be using original colors that reflect our own personal taste and style. Original colors, colors that make your heart happy. That's the goal here. Now, I'm not sure if Mother Nature is pranking me here, but three of these colors, they look a heck of a lot like one of those 246 combinations that I just warned you not to use. So yes, if I color these crocus, I'm going to pull out V17, V15, and V112. Sometimes Copic actually gets it right. But I see more here than just those three colors. And this is my chance to add more realism than you can get from a standard three marker blending combination. Okay, right here, I see something darker than V17 and it's warmer than V17 too. So even if they made a V18 or a V19, which they don't, but if they made a V19, it would be too cool to color this spot. To go warmer, I need to shift over to the V0 family. The V0s are warmer purples. They have pink undertones. So I'm going to add V09 to the blend here. Now about that wine color. This is a very red purple. 
I wouldn't blame you for testing something like RV69, RV99, or even R89 to see if they work. But I like to mix my own colors, and I do this using the underpainting process. I see that color as redder than V09, so why not put red under V09? Here, I'm laying down a base of R29. Yes, that's R for red, 29, and it's a very traditional red red. Now V09 goes over the top. The purple hides the red, but we're still seeing that reddish flavor that R29 brings to the party. Then I'll continue on with the rest of my new blending combination, R29, V09, V17, V15, and V112. So what do you think? Can you see coloring the purple crocus with this unusual set of colors? But wait, let's add more magic. I always use colored pencils over the top of my marker coloring. The markers, they're the base colors. The pencils then enhance the marker color, allowing me to shift the temperatures, add shade and depth, or even add highlights. For this set of crocus, I'd add a transparent green pencil to the shady zone. Green and purple sit opposite of each other on the color wheel, and when these two colors mix, they kind of cancel each other out making the murky purple colors that we see in the shade. I also see some highlights on the points of the petals. This is where the purple-violet mixtures are the deepest. I'm using a pale opaque blue to tint the tips with a bit of extra light. Now how about a wild card color? This is Process Red, a transparent bright magenta. The more I stare at these purple petals, the more pink I start to see here, here, and here. So I'm glazing a few areas here and there, adding happiness to the blend. What do you think? Color is magic, but if you're always 2 4 sixing everything that you color, you're not tapping into the infinite potential of color. You're also ignoring your artistic voice, your taste, your style, the way you use color, that's what makes your coloring special. That's what turns average coloring into art. You have these artist grade materials. You've invested time and money into your coloring. And I don't think that was with the intention of being a copycat. Play with your colors. See what you can create. Color like an artist.